Hi, everyone. So um, I think maybe the theme of the panel today is hopefully you go back to the business and probably have some take home message and create some impact for your business. Yeah, we would love to see that, okay, we can meet like one year from now and say, hey, I heard the panel from Anguian, Justin Soso, and Guris from AWS, and we actually make a big change in our business using AI and create a huge impact. Okay, let's say a short introduction about you, and maybe as a warm up question. So, what is the AI innovation that you excite the most, or let's say that excites you the most? Hi, I'm Girish. I work as head of technology for AI at uh, AWS uh, for ASEAN region. And my job is to research what is happening in the field and make strategy for AWS. And uh, what I'm excited about is how democratized the knowledge is becoming because of AI. Uh, that's probably the most profound thing. Thank you. All right. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ling. I'm uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur, and uh, I, I turn to uh, venture capitalists. So uh, I'm the the uh, founding partner of uh, Earth Venture Capital. So we uh, invest in uh, climate tech startup, uh, and uh, we we found that there are a trend of a lot of uh, startup uh, leverage AI, which is a very like disruptive uh, technology to tackle the own, but also emerging and and painful. Uh, problem is climate change, and um, yeah, uh, there are a lot of uh, technologies uh, emerge, and um, we will found that uh, very interesting thing about um, the the stuff, but go beyond the Gen AI, and uh, let's share more a little more about AI and Gen AI compared later. My name is Wen, the founder and CEO of Trusting Social. We are a AI company solving the credit access problem in Southeast Asia and India. Today we have about 30 million consumers in Southeast Asia and India get access to loans that otherwise they would not be able to. In the last two years we invest all in on generative AI as a way to bring down the cost of credit access to even more people. We are excited that um, about 25% of the cost on issuing a loan can be reduced thanks to generative AI, which will bring down the cost for the consumers and the economy tremendously. Another opportunity that we are excited about is to educate the consumers. 90% of the world population is financial illiterate. That number is even higher in emerging markets. All of that create a lot of what we call financial suffering. But now we have a tool to reduce or even eradicate financial suffering, which is my dream. So really cool. So I was with the three panelists in a room outside, and they were sharing one very interesting observation that even though AI has become so popular, they're still very surprised that not many people actually they meet, they see, let's say, the founder and the team, most of the team in engineer or developer, they have not used AIs as much that they actually expected. So can you share some of your thought or any like example you think that is gonna be really helpful for the founder in our audience? Yeah. Uh so, as I said uh, in the beginning, uh, the most excited aspect of this revolution is the democratization of knowledge that is happening. So, I want to ask the audience, how many of you have used perplexity? Okay. So, that's not probably even 10% in the audience. Uh, while you are attending this session, please download perplexity on your phone and ask it any complex question that you are thinking about. Uh, it will find out articles from the internet and it will get you a great answer. Okay, it saves me 30 to 40 per, uh, minutes of time. I have completely stopped using Google. Okay, many a times if I say something smart, many a times I have learned it with help of perplexity. Same, there are so many tools for doing so many things like software development. We are all familiar with Q4 developer or Copilot. There is another new kid on the block called as Cursor. 
it literally speeds up uh, coding process by a huge margin. But more than that, these tools will enable you to do the kind of things that you were not able to do in past because you didn't go to a great university or whatever reason, right? Um, so please make sure that you use these tools uh, and make sure that your employees use these tools and reward them in some way to discover the new tools that are being launched. Okay, so basically he's hurt my feeling because he said that he stopped using Google. <laughs> okay, so let me take a revenge. We are moving to Google Cloud now. Okay, we stopped using AWS. Okay, for training our data. Anyway, so Perf, Perf, Perf CD is a semantic search. Uh, it actually uh, gives you a really uh, nice uh, answer to explain things for you rather than the indexes of Google. Okay, it's a really good tool to use. I use it a lot. Okay. And so any, any other audience, like panelists want to add something about like, some practical application of AI, do you think that we should do it daily? My simple way of presenting the map of AI applications is by a two by two dimensions. Uh, one is predictive AI, meaning that you try to guess something that will happen in the future, like a demand search or logistic problems, weather impacting on your production. So that's predictive AI. And then you have generative AI, which is more about uh, intellectual work like um, customer support, sales, and so on. And then you have uh, another dimension, which is um, low cost and high cost. As a, as a small business and a startup, I would strongly recommend to build the capability in-house on the low-cost um, applications. For example, if you want to predict, let's say, um, a new harvest, right? it's actually pretty simple. Uh, there are many open source ready-made models that you can just copy and, and paste and input your data. And that definitely will help your business immediately. Similarly, for Basic application for generative AI, for example, customer support chat is very, very simple. You should do it tomorrow. Um, we did it uh, 18 months ago, and um, we have one of our clients to increase their um, customer satisfaction score by more than 20%, just overnight, just because it's so fast, because it's so fast, and it's so cheap. On the, and, and you need to avoid the pitfalls of investing too much too early on the larger models. There are models that take a million dollars, ten million dollars, hundred million dollars, a billion dollars. Um, you better wait for you know three, four, five months, and it it um, it will um, just magically show up because we are at a accelerated curve of generative AI and um, AGI in the future. So I think that is a short term you can actually leverage it. This is a very simple technology. Anyone can use it, which is our biggest worry, right? Uh, it's used to take us, you know, 10 PhDs working uh, for six months to build a crash scoring model. But if you just need, you know, a basic scoring model for your customer support prioritization, you just need one student working with generative AI models. You come up with like 80% of the solution, so. This is truly um, low-cost technology that can spread very, very widely. Um, so that is kind of a short-term suggestion from my side. The problem that I'm most excited about is that because of low-cost technology for intellectual work, it creates a Cambrian or uh, a blossom period of new ways of interacting between consumers, companies, doing business. There will be a lot of disruption right now thinking about what you can do to solve your problem. For example, we only think about lowering the cost of borrowing for billions of people. That's it. We don't think about anything else. And this presents us a very sharp application for generative AI. And um, we have the patience, we have the confidence that regardless of the development of generative AI and uh, AGI will be there because that the, the, 
the problems of billions of consumers that are suffering right now. Okay, so I think let me uh, summarize what Anh Nguyen said in one sentence. Okay, by the way, I'm very close with VinAI, so let's talk some bad thing about that. Okay, so what you're suggesting, don't build for GPT, right? Use the existing model and build a customized solution. I believe Vietnam have like built 10 different GPT models, so throw them away and actually use application instead. Is that the correct summary of what you just suggested? My recommendation is use the best for your problem. Don't race, you know, participate in this, um, you know, global race of those, you know, hyperscalers and um, the biggest countries in the world. It's just not Okay, wise. so uh, the second part was, is AI model has become commodity. You don't need to develop another model. Yes, sir. Một cái việc, nói chung là cái việc đầu tiên đơn giản nhất mình làm đó là book time vào trong calendar. Em về em send một cái calendar với tất cả nhân viên hoặc là những người mà mình thấy là quan trọng và cần phải làm là 15 phút một ngày từ 6 giờ đến 6 giờ 15 hoặc là 5 giờ đến 5 giờ 15 là AI time. Không cần biết là bạn làm cái gì, làm gì đó liên quan đến AI. Thì đó là một cách mình nâng cái skill của mình lên. Okay, I, 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 sum, I summarize it for you. Okay, so he is a dictator of the company. Okay, he say that everybody come six to 6.15, do whatever AI related. Yeah, so if you are the dictator in the company, that's what you do. Uh, so, uh, in uh, Amazon, for example, uh, there is an internal mandate for all the teams to achieve a certain level of efficiency by using AI. And there are a lot of our customers, like we all are familiar with Grab. Grab CEO has advised all their uh, uh, teams, legal, tax, customer support, to achieve a certain amount of efficiency every quarter by use of AI. So uh, the push needs to come from the top. Uh, it will also come from the bottom. Some engineers will figure out on their own. Some marketing people will figure out on their own. But as a business leader, uh, you are better off uh, pushing it from top down. And of course, you will need to fund it as well. Uh, so yeah, it's worthwhile. OK, so thank you so much. Um, anyway, so I think one of the really important topic about um, AI it's like, uh, now we serve the audience, right? The audience, a lot of them are founders, okay? We're running business, and our business struggle, okay? We are about to bankrupt, okay? The AI trend come, okay? Can I leverage AI to turn our business around? Because otherwise, I'm in the AI FOMO, right? Fear of missing out, okay? Can I do AI to basically turn our business around or ask differently? Can you guys over here give some advice to me and the audience about how to actually leverage AI as a magical ingredient for our success, for the business success? Make it sure that, okay, we don't, don't use AI for let's basically like AI power company to go for fundraising, okay? But actually using it to improve the business and so on. First, I think there's no way that we cannot use AI to make our product better. It's just, if we don't find any application in any business, we're just looking at the wrong places. Secondly, there's no way that we can not lower the cost of operation with AI. So for me, the banking industry can reduce 80% of the workforce. Or reversely, they can serve you know, 5x more customers with the same number of people. So I think this is the, um, the exciting time, and uh, AI can be used here now to turn around your business. If you already have revenue, then you definitely can um, reduce the cost. You can create new services, add on um, value-added services to your business, and that's the first point I want to make, right? That in short term, you can definitely do something about your business. The second um, point I want to make is that in the midterm, when the, uh, the um, artificial general intelligence come, then 
none of that matters much because the whole chessboard will be redrawn with the power to the consumers, powers to innovators. When you have some spare time, not you know, solving your immediate crisis, think about new business model. Um, I, I tell one of my friends is that um, for every software company, your valuation will decrease by 50% every year, thanks to the productivity of um, generative AI. So what are you going to do about it? Otherwise, in three years, you're going to be 10% of your company right now. I think that is a very urgent matter, and especially for the companies that have been stagnant for a long time, that is definitely a worthwhile problem to think about. Basically, let me summarize one sentence. Uh, he had two points. The first one, AI is a must. There is no way for you not using AI. The second one is when AGI comes closer, then a lot of software company will be basically reduce or losing their valuation because uh, things will move much faster using AI. Let me ask more specific question. Okay, first maybe can you define AGI? And the second one is a lot of my, my friends, they are talking about the Asian economy, right? In the next, let's say in a very near future, it's no longer human doing thing. It will be the autonomous agents or the AI agents will do most of the work. Can you elaborate on that? Because if our founders here, we are not prepared, Later on, we are we is like so late in the game. At that time, the agents, the AI agents do most of the job. And then your competitor is like 10x ahead of you. So the concept of AI agent is um, it can work in most of the economically valuable jobs, just like human. Can so, you give an example, yeah. something I don't know much about AI, sure, sure. I can understand. For example, um, for customer support, right? Um, a typical fully loaded cost of a customer support agent in Vietnam is about $1,000 a month. Now, AI can do a much better job in terms of customer experience, accuracy, um, and um, speed. Much better, like 10x better, at a cost of $20, $30. So that is how much disruptive it is, right? Yeah. Can I add an example? Sure. Uh, so agents uh, do tasks autonomously. They are not perfect they work like 90-95% perfect. So of course, you don't want to put agents in life and death kind of a situation. But there are many places where uh, five to 10% of inaccuracy is not a big problem because you have ways to test solutions. Uh, in Amazon, we were running a lot of our software on older versions of Java. Most companies are using very old versions of Java because you know, migration is not a sexy job. Nobody uh, gets a lot of credit for doing code migration. And that makes your software vulnerable because it doesn't have patches, etc. So in Amazon, we developed an agent to migrate Java code from older version to the newer version. As I said, 95% of the work was perfect. 5% of the work was not perfect. But it is very easy to test the migrated software and figure out whether it has been migrated correctly or not and iterate until it is migrated correctly. By doing that, we saved 4,500 years of software development work, uh, which is $260 million in economic value. So agents are very powerful in cases where it's not life and death situation and outcome can be verified. So please do consider how you can put agents to the best use. I'd like to expand it a little bit more. Imagine that five years from now, 90% of human jobs, current human jobs, will be done by AI much faster, much more accurate, much more sympathetic. I think that that future is, is coming pretty quickly and we see it in our banking industry. Now, it doesn't mean that 90% of people were out of the job because humanity somehow have managed to survive and thrive in all technology revolutions. So today we don't have enough resources to fix the environment, to go to Mars, to you know, explore uh, the ocean floor. But in the future, with new technologies, 
that we'll, we'll have a lot more people working on those um, aspirational fields that, um, that we don't have the luxury right now. One example is that, um, like in 19th cent uh, 18th centuries, right, around 70% of the population, the workforce is actually work for food. But 25% of the population work for cloth. And then, the, the, you know, the, the, there's some for, for housing and, and so on, right? Nowadays, all the clothes that we wear is about 2% of the world population. Right now, banking is about 8% of the world, uh, world population. But I see the future that you know, one, only 1% of the humanity will work in banking, but provide the services that is 10 times better than right now. So, Anh Huy, where is Anh Huy? I, 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 I think Anh Huy, I, ACB have more than 12,000 employees, right? So that means what he said in five years, we only need 1,000 employees at ACB. Okay, so anyway, so I hope there's no lawyer in the audience because I expect that there will be no lawyer job in the next five years. Is that correct? No, I don't think so. Um, uh, just to correct uh, on the banking example, right now the cost of servicing is so high that the vast majority of Vietnamese are not well served, right? So, for example, when we lose a credit card, who gonna support us when we have, you know, have to send kids to school? Nobody gonna advise us. I think that 10 years from now, when we look at the state of the banking services today, we'll think about it as if we think about the dark ages. Like, how can you be so unapathetic to consumers? How can you not helping them when you have the mean, right? So, I believe that the banking industry is a, has an infinite opportunity to grow. It's just that they don't need, you know, 8% of the world population working in a banking, in a very basic job, like uh, doing KYC at the bank, you know, writing a, a check and, uh, you know, making sure that the check is correct and so on. Sure. You were saying something? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the, uh, maybe, I, in, in my opinion, maybe the, the number of employees may not change, but the proportion of the work, the category of the work may change. Like imagine in the software industry, like, like 80%, I mean, like maybe like more than half of the time of the developer is not really writing the new code, right? A lot of them using for debugging, writing command, like refactoring, a lot of different boring job. Uh, maybe in the future, there are a lot of AI going to assist them to do all of those. So, it not necessarily mean that number of programmers are gonna reduce. It just means that they spend more time on the meaningful job, aspiring, aspiring job. So that, that, that I think. Okay, so uh, let's switch gear a little bit. So I Nam was mentioned about uh, the word unicorn and so on, right? And uh, you know, like a lot of companies suddenly become unicorn in the US because they work in AI. Okay, and uh, when I read the, um, the AI report uh, for Southeast Asia, actually not, more than 90% of the AI, the native AI company in Southeast Asia, they work on B2B. But a lot of company in the US, they get a crazy growth because of B2C. Okay, can you comment on this? Or a lot of our uh, audience may be thinking about, hey, how can I leverage AI? So most of us will go B2B because that's what we have been doing. We can go IPO 2027 if we can get into the B2C uh, market quickly. Sure, you get close to me and you said that you stopped using Google. I still yes. hold that against you. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so uh, first of all, uh, as he rightly hinted, uh, most of the startups are in B2B space, fewer focusing on B2C, uh, but B2C uh, is easier if you know how to promote your product on Instagram, Facebook, or through other channels. Uh, you have to get your app on the App Store, so on and so forth. The point of AI is it enables so many new types of applications that wasn't possible and even developing those applications is easy. So of course the competition is going to be cutthroat. Uh, 
but the point is there is literally nothing a software sitting in Vietnam cannot do that a software in Silicon Valley can do because this technology is easy and it is imperfect. It is capable but imperfect and that's the perfect combination of the problem where you can add your diligence and make a great product. So please consider B2C. Perplexity is a great example but there are many other uh, B2C use cases and again don't focus on LLMs only. So LLMs as in text applications only. Uh, generative AI helps you parse audio, parse video, build surveillance applications, build security applications, so on and so forth. And uh, you know, the models are available as API. You don't have to build models. So you have great models, you have diverse capabilities, and you have got things that are capable but imperfect. So that is a perfect trifecta of uh, place where you want to go, where a lot of innovation uh, possible and opportunity exists. But it's not very clear, I, uh, I'm an audience. Like, are you suggesting like go full force to B2C or still like B2B to C or, or something? Or depend on the business or what? See, the thing is this, right? B2C is easier to promote, easier to sell, and these applications are easier to develop, right? Even four or five or even one person can develop a great B2C application. So it's a low hanging fruit and there is nothing that prevents you from developing for France or Germany or anywhere else. Like if you talk uh, to Claude and get it to translate your documentations in German or French or anything, it will do a perfect job or near perfect job, right? So yeah, there are no barriers. Okay, so you guys been in this area for a long time. I'm just curious why, or any reason you think that why, like more than 90% of the native AI company, sorry, native gen AI company in Southeast Asia are actually B2B? Because our market is too small. Because our market is too small? Yeah, so in terms of purchasing power, we are like, you know, 2% of the US market. So the trick of doing B2C is to find a big enough niche. I, I find that this is a very hard for a small economy like Vietnam to be big enough in a niche. So that's the first point, right? The second point is we don't have a very strong investment community. So we have no unicorn that have exited in the last 20 years. So that is another limiting factor of how you're going to invest, how long you have to invest before you can reap the benefit. On the other hand, the B2B has thousands of applications, like a small bank would have anywhere between you know, 40 to 80 different applications for gen generative AI. A big bank like Chase, they have thousands, right? So each of these applications, you can make some money. And then, you know, from that application, you expand into the internal ecosystem and you make an, another, another, another. And that is actually how most of the wealth for the founders are made, right? So they don't have, you know, a hundred billion dollars, but a lot of billion, uh, the billionaires in the B2, B2B space. Yeah, but I'm curious why, I am li li limiting myself to the Vietnamese or the Southeast Asian market. If I can build a B2C and I target the US market mm. with AI Asian, right? We can actually go there. We can offer us like build a game. A lot of people play. Let the AI Asian build a game for us and go to B2C. Why not? So the, in the US market, um, the cost of acquisition would be very brutal. So, for example, in... in yeah, Canada. but there's a lot of AI, native gen AI company in the US. They go, poof! And you mean because of funding? Mm. Yes. Because of funding. So yeah. they blame on those VC who don't give them the money, enough money. Is this correct? Okay, just kidding. But I still believe that 
we even located inside Vietnam, we can still go and fundraise from the US VC. Um, maybe like Singaporean VC sitting over there to get funded or, or what? Because I, I don't think funding right now is a big problem. Or it, at least in, 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 in my opinion, about that because you are in Vietnam, so that it's harder for you to get money. Maybe you get a much lower valuation, but sh sure, if you grow, uh, grow something big, it's a much bigger cake. So it might not be about money or funding, that's what I see. Yeah, if, if I see a Shopee coming, from, uh, coming out of Vietnam, then I believe you. Uh, actually, India is big in a market. So they have a lot of unicorns, you know, publicly listed, very, very profitable. But I think Vietnam probably going to have to wait for, for some time, maybe 10 years, 15 years. So he focused in Vietnam, but the report I read, like 44% of uh, Gen AI actually built in Singapore by Singaporean company. There would not be, there would not be a problem of funding in, in Singapore. But 90, more than 90% of them are still B2B. Do you have any suggestion or any thought about it? Yeah. So, uh, see, uh, he uh, rightly discussed all the reasons why uh, entrepreneurs focus on a B2B. Uh, but the point I want to make is B2C is easy to enter, uh, the apps are easy to develop, and don't always think of an app that will exist on the market for 10 years. Because a lot of these apps, uh, the function that they provide, they bridge some kind of weakness in the foundation model by adding some plumbing or uh, they provide uh, just an easy to uh, use way uh, with the foundation model. So there was this Korean app, I forgot the name, uh, just a couple of months back on Instagram, everyone was posting pictures of their self as if those pictures were taken like uh, 30 or 40 years back. Okay, so the pictures had 80s theme and the pictures were wonderful that app was making, I think, uh, $600,000 uh, dollars, $600, a day. That app's, app was popular for three months. It went away. Okay? The point is not that it went away. The point is that it was developed by one person and it made $18 million per month around for three months. Not bad kind of money, right? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, don't always have a mindset that you are building a business to last for like whatever hunt. Think of yourself as a gaming studio that keeps on launching games. Think of yourself as a app, AI app studio that keeps on launching a new app every month. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, again, a bit miss. Okay. Đầu tiên một câu chuyện đó là khoảng giờ này khoảng một năm rưỡi trước một hồi mình nhận được cuộc điện thoại đó là Hey, mình có muốn uh, đầu tư vào OpenAI không? Mình, mình nghĩ là bao nhiêu? Và, uh, và bên uh, ngân hàng mới nói là 20 tỷ đô. Mình, lúc đó mọi người biết là lúc đó là chỉ mới ra ChatGPT 3 thôi, chưa được 3.5. Yeah. Chưa được 3.5 nữa và mình và lúc đó cách đây mấy tháng còn chưa biết ChatGPT là gì. Trong vòng khoảng mấy tháng thì là là công ty định giá 20 tỷ đô Đắt quá này chắc là 2 phê Xong rồi nó không Không đầu tư Bây giờ nó thành là trăm mấy chục tỷ Nhân năm trong vòng khoảng hơn một năm Đó là một câu chuyện Cái thứ hai đó là có thể là mọi người không biết Nhưng mà trong khánh phòng hôm nay Trong những người ở đây Có những bạn đang làm những cái app AI Mà có thể kiếm được Rất nhiều tiền hàng Lợi, lợi nhuận, profit Có thể lên đến chục triệu đô Even more và, và không phải là một uh, ngoại lệ mà có thể thấy được rất nhiều và nên chắc chắn là là trong tương lai sẽ còn nhiều hơn thì lúc nãy mình cũng có một cái uh, so sánh là nãy anh anh anh, anh, anh tâm có xe là có hai hướng khi mình nói về business có hai hướng một đó, đó là quan trọng là mình nhắm đến hướng nào đúng không đó là chúng ta nhắm tới đó là build to sell hay là build for profit nếu mà chúng ta nhắm đến valuation thì có thể là theo hướng của open ai làm sao để mà valuation tăng rất 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 nhanh 
không cần lý do gì hết chỉ cần là mọi nhà đầu tư và thị trường đồng ý đó là một hướng hướng thứ hai đó là có profit rất nhanh và cả hai hướng trên thực tế là cả hai hướng đó với thị trường bây giờ đều là là khả thi vậy thì cái cái key đầu tiên để mà làm đó là mình phải chọn thứ nhất là mình phải chọn cái style mình là cái gì for valuation hoặc for profit for dividend hoặc cash là hai hướng khác nhau và mix up là chắc chắn là chết đó là cái key message đầu tiên cái thứ hai đó là và hai hướng thứ nhất là là cái cách chơi nó cũng sẽ rất khác nhau nó một bên là chúng ta sẽ phải đối diện với lại chúng ta phải chơi cuộc chơi của big tech làm sao đó là foundation model high valuation hoặc là niche rất là niche uh, có có một vài cái 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 cách để mà chúng ta tìm ra cái niche và một vài cái term sau này khi mà chúng ta có có AI á, thì nó sẽ giúp chúng ta sáng tạo rất nhiều và cái key của AI đó là nó tạo ra cái thứ mới với cái giá rất 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 thấp khi đó nó sẽ enable một chuyện đó là chúng ta sẽ tạo ra more personalized product khi đó thì chúng ta có thể tạo ra những cái sản phẩm mà nó giải quyết những vấn đề rất rất cụ thể ví dụ như là trước đây mình làm CIM mình làm sale đúng không nhưng mà bây giờ mình có thể làm một công ty CIM chỉ dành riêng cho tiệm cầm đồ hoặc tiệm cắt tóc hai cái đó là hai cái hướng scale hoàn toàn khác nhau đúng không thì cả hai cái đều có thể là thành tỷ đô được đó là là một cái hướng thì và keyword đó là vượt là hồi trước là thế hệ trước là mình đang nói là, là uh, software eat everywhere eat the world bây giờ đó là SaaS bây giờ là vertical SaaS là đi vào những cái ngách rất nhỏ của của SaaS uh, giải quyết những vấn đề rất rất cụ thể và đảm bảo được là chúng ta tạo ra những cái barrier mà đối thủ không muốn vào hoặc không thèm vào đó là cái cái tactic thứ hai hoặc là chúng ta đi theo hướng đó là làm thất rộng uh, và ở thị trường rất lớn cái skill set nó hoàn toàn khác skill set đó là để làm cho những sản phẩm là mass b 2 c ví dụ như là những sản phẩm mà mọi người có thể là là nghĩ là nó rất tầm thường uh, nhưng mà rất nhiều người xài ví dụ như là chỉ đơn giản đó là chỉnh ảnh làm sao đó là uh, xóa mụn bằng ai chẳng hạn vậy thì những cái đó chỉ cần là một đô của rất nhiều người ở gen cũng có thể thành công ty trăm triệu tỷ đô thì cho nên là là yếm là có rất rất nhiều cách để mà grow một cái business mà quan trọng đó là chúng phải tìm được cái playbook phù hợp với mình. Okay, so he uh, say so well. I cannot summarize in one or two sentences. Okay. <cười> However, I compensate it for you to explain about Earth Venture. Okay. So he introduced himself as the uh, VC of Earth Venture, but actually behind the scene, he was one of the very great founder in games. Okay. Uh, one of the main reasons he started Earth Venture because he made a really successful game. Millions of people play. They waste a lot of time, okay? And he feels so guilty. So that's why he had to start Earth Venture to basically doing some great work, a good work for the society. Yeah. Yeah, great story. Okay. So anyway, it's a time for the audience asking questions. Anyone would love to ask any question to the panelists here? First of all, thank you so much for, for the panel, for your sharing. Uh, my question is, um, today AI has proven itself beyond the capability of search or chatbot, and all the, uh, or pr most of the products that we are seeing out there is productivity boost. Uh, so from your experience, uh, take us to more of a futuristic uh, scenario where you know, AI or gen AI innovation uh, couldn't happen without, or any innovation couldn't happen without AI. So, okay, may, may I share a, a few uh, case of the, the portfolio of the company we, we invest in? Um, so, so we invest in a company doing um, labro meat. So with labro meat, we, we need to create and found, create a new protein and grow the cells into, in the lab and, and make it a real meat. And um, they need, and one thing that very lit, little people know about LLM is that it's very similar to ADN. It's the same technology because like ADN is a sequence of data. And with the LLM, we create new text. With the same technology of AI, we can create the new type of protein. And we use that technology to create a new type of meat, new type of cells, new type of fat. And we can like create a new like 
creature, I mean, animal, uh, trees, a lot of things. And imagine, like, in, in the future, like, we, right now, we use the prompt to create a paragraph, a song, right? But in the future, we can use the prompt to create the new type of trees. We use less water. We can prevent the bug. We can sustain the climate change. So that is the future that, that Gen AI can help us and enable us to more sustainability. OK, I think maybe one answer is great enough. Any other uh, question from the audience? But by the way, I will not eat that uh, lab-grown meat. It's, it's not very tasty. Yeah, yeah. If the climate change is going to, after the storm, like all oh, the cash will die, you have no choice. Cho phép tôi uh, xin chào tất cả quý vị trong hội trường cùng như uh, bốn diễn giả của chúng ta vào hôm nay ạ. À, tôi muốn uh, xin hỏi một câu hỏi bởi vì à, về uh, AI ở trên trên các cái diễn đàn của mạng xã hội á, có rất nhiều cái khóa học à, để để cho chúng ta học trên đó rồi thì tôi cũng không muốn đào sâu về cái đó nhưng tôi muốn hỏi rằng là bao nhiêu lâu nữa thì những cái 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 AI như vậy nó có thể hỗ trợ cho chúng ta vào một cái lĩnh vực mà nhất định và và tương lai định hướng của à, các cái diễn giả ở đây có thể hiểu rõ hơn về là cái định hướng của đất nước của chúng ta hay AI nó có thể à, thay thế được trong các lĩnh vực nào? Em xin cảm ơn ạ. Um, so I can translate the question quickly. Um, so AI is well used in very specific vertical. So for example, healthcare. Okay, so his question is, uh, can you see uh, the future where the AI can actually be applied, let's say, at the national level, or maybe like much more popular, not very specific, but basically right now, what he said that he hear AI everywhere. So I would like to take that uh, question. Uh, so Anthropic, uh, just uh, two days back, launched something called as computer use. So it's Maybe you explain what Anthropic is. Okay. Yeah. So Anthropic is a leading uh, AI lab. So their model, Claude Sonnet 3.5, is very popular. You should try it. Uh, it's very impressive. So they launched something called as computer use. So it's an agent that runs on your laptop. And you can give it a random task. For example, you can ask it to check your Outlook calendar uh, for meeting invites. For example, you have a meeting in Thailand and book air tickets accordingly. Okay? So it can operate your computer. It can operate different apps on your computer. It can rob, uh, operate uh, email, maps, general browsing, music apps. Anything that can be done with your computer, it can do. Anthropic, of course, has uh, locked it from doing everything. But the point is this capability is only going to get better. AI is going to be able to figure out how it performs activities on your behalf. Okay? So this is like a general purpose capability. You can have your employees automate 50%, 60%, 70% of their daily tasks using uh, this agent-based approach. So it's happening. I think the future of um, generative AI in any kind of um, mass intellectual work is very near. Uh, right now, our AI agents having about 10 million conversations every month with humans, with customers. So uh, for easier applications like customer support, sales, cross-sale, and so on, it's going to be here in, it, it's here right now, right? Um, and um, it's going to be popularized very, very fast. Government is going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to be there. Medical, probably three to five years. Now, scientific research, creating new breakthroughs, we're not sure yet. Like the, the AI models like uh, AlphaFold by Google just get um, Nobel Prize in chemistry for basically decoding all the possible NDA foldings 
over a Christmas that would otherwise take millions of people, millions of PhD level researchers, five years, right? So you know, it's already disrupting very advanced area. We don't know yet when this superhuman capability is coming. It may be coming in the next three years, next five years, next 10 years, we don't know. But on popular, you know, low, lower skilled knowledge work, it's going to be here very fast in the next one, two, three years. Mm, if you would like to uh, add answer into it, or we have one final question. Em, em chỉ chia sẻ một cái góc nhìn ở ở phía quỹ mà em nghĩ là là sẽ rất là hữu ích cho doanh nghiệp. Đó là gì? Đó là câu hỏi của anh là một câu hỏi rất là giá trị và đó cũng là chính chính xác là một câu hỏi một cái quỹ đầu tư khi mà đầu tư vào công ty trong một cái thời đại mà bất kỳ cái sự tồn tại của cái doanh nghiệp nào đó, có thể bị AI thay thế ngay năm sau đúng không thì quỹ là, là cái người bỏ tiền vào một công ty thì chắc chắn nó phải đặt ra câu hỏi đó trước cái công ty mình đang đầu tư vào năm sau nó còn không có bị những công ty khác đang xài AI nó replace không vậy thì cái góc nhìn của một cái quỹ đầu tư khi nhìn vào công ty đối với cái vấn đề AI nói chung là như thế nào đó là liệu đó, đó là AI có phải là cái năng lực cốt lõi duy nhất của công ty đó hay không nếu mà AI là năng lực cốt lõi duy nhất công ty thì không nên đầu tư vào công ty đó tại sao tại vì đó, nếu mà mình nhìn theo góc nhìn đó là game theory thì có nghĩa là giả sử như tất cả những công ty trên thị trường đều có AI thì có nghĩa là nếu mà tôi chỉ có AI nghĩa là tôi chả có lợi thế gì hết như vậy đó, thì có nghĩa là 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 công ty phải có những cái secret sauce khác secret sauce đó là những cái rất khó bắt trước rất lâu để mà có thể tạo ra ví dụ như là uy tín uy tín không AI không làm được uy tín AI không làm được ra management tốt AI không tạo ra được cái sự gắn kết của con người AI cũng rất khó để hiểu khách hàng mình phải có những cái mà mà AI không làm được và thực tế là sẽ có rất nhiều cái AI không làm được AI nó chỉ có mình giúp cho mình có knowledge nhanh xử lý nhanh nó giúp cho mọi thứ nhanh hơn nó cũng giúp cho nếu như mà một thông tin sai nó sẽ giúp cho mọi thứ collapse nhanh hơn như vậy thì tìm ra được một cái vấn đề gì đó mà AI không làm được sẽ là cái key của một cái doanh nghiệp mà mình mình cần phải tìm ra có một cái cái uh, câu nói rất hay trong của đầu tư đó, đó là là love your problem not do not love your solution và AI là một trong những cái solution mà mình thấy hiện tại cái solution đó sau này tất cả mọi người sẽ đều có nếu mà mình cứ yêu cái cái solution của mình và mình tin vào nó và nghĩ đó là một lợi thế là một cái niềm tin sai lầm vậy thì nhưng mà cái problem là những cái mà mình rất rất lâu thay đổi Ví dụ như, như ở Earth Venture mình tin vào cái problem và mình thấy problem rất khó thay đổi luôn Đó là biến đổi khí hậu Rất lâu, không biết là khi nào mới có thể giải quyết được Hoặc là uh, sức khỏe, hoặc là tín dụng, hoặc là tri thức, giáo dục Tất cả những cái đó là những cái problem rất lớn và chúng ta có thể đi theo cái đó hoài Một cái doanh nghiệp phải có một cái problem statement của mình và đi theo Và AI là một cái công cụ ở trong đó Cho nên là có một cái mình nghĩ là không cần phải quá lo đó là, là là liệu là sau này mình có mất job hay không vấn đề mình nên ở công ty thì chắc chắn sau này thì ai cũng sẽ xài thôi mình không cần phải phải lo chuyện đó nếu mà mình không tự làm được thì mình sẽ mua được mình không mua được mình sẽ thuê được mình không thuê được thì mình sẽ xác nhập mua bán gì đó tôi còn rất nhiều cái công cụ khác mà mình có thể vẫn có thể làm được miễn là là có nhiều cách Okay, so I think uh, Ling concludes the panel with a wonderful uh, let's say closing uh, remark Okay, all right, and I just want to share it with you. He's uh, uh, one of our investors, and I think when we went to him asking for his investments, I didn't tell him that we, our core values is actually our patented AI technology. So if we did say that properly, he didn't invest. <laughs> okay, so I was doing some cheating on you. All right, no, so <laughs> thank you so much for, uh, for coming, and... Uh, Great uh, <laughs> panelists today. Enjoy the evening. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.